You're listening to the Kingdom Project Podcast. These are discussions on biblical theology and interpretation. The emphasis is on context and grace. The goal is to promote biblical literacy by displacing and debunking most modern interpretations. The challenge is to engage in healthy conversation that may stretch, but sharpen iron. This is The Kingdom Project, and I'm your host, Marcus Hall. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. Thanks for streaming, downloading, subscribing, liking, reviewing. If you have not done that, please do so. That would be greatly appreciated. Give me uh, give me one star, give me five. Make it interesting. I don't know. Hope you all are doing well. Um, trying to find some new, you know, uh, times to record as I've mentioned in previous episodes so uh schedule's looking pretty good though for this week so i'm gonna go ahead and have this this should be out for the beginning of the week and then we should have a a mid week episode as well hopefully and get back onto some regular scheduled uh programming (laughs) for your for your liking and for your consumption of um you know theological opinion and conversation i suppose i don't know but uh anyway thanks thanks everybody Uh, getting downloads in um ireland and the netherlands and all across the world and um getting new listeners too because older episodes are uh the downloads have uh, gone up on those so yeah cool um really appreciate that that's really awesome um so i'm just gonna keep doing this and and get get this get this stuff out and like i said i hope it's uh um informational i hope it's helpful i hope it edifies so uh this this episode i want to talk about paul's thorn in the flesh um a lot of talk about that i've actually just was seeing some of that stuff on facebook actually too so i thought hey uh, let's we could talk about that and um i think i believe contrary to popular um thought or belief that paul's thorn was not a sickness um it wasn't his eyesight it wasn't anything else um a, a thorn in the flesh or thorn in the side is actually an idiom it is a hebrew idiom and that's if you're not familiar with um with that type of language and how that goes that that's what's going on you're not going to understand it right so uh there's there's plenty of idioms um in scripture and you know another one is heaven and earth and there's there's various uh uses for the phrase heaven and earth there's the physical um in the old testament god will refer to um israel as heaven and earth the temple was known as heaven and earth so um and there's there's just there's a there's a great deal of figures of speech or idioms and stuff like that so um we're just gonna get in here this comes from second corinthians 12 and it's 7 through 10 when it says so so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations a thorn was given me in the flesh a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. All right, so, first off, thorn in the flesh, messenger of Satan, all right, um, some, some translations, okay, it says messenger of Satan to harass me, but others will say buffet, um, but let's look, you know, the word translated uh, infirmities and weakness um, are all different forms of this this Greek and which, which can refer it's a Greek noun which can refer to, to weakness or infirmity um, depending on the context if it's physical and spiritual um, so it, it should but in some cases it should be taken as weakness or um, uh, it can mean, it, it can mean other things like sickness and disease, but it should also be understood in a spiritual sense as well. And there's a lot of verses and I'm just going to mention them and not read them all, but there's like Romans six, uh, 19, there's Romans eight, 26 or second Corinthians 11, 30. That's just a couple. Um, so then, then there's the word that's translated "I am weak," and it's in a in a verb. It's um, the reason why I'm not saying these words is because it's, they're hard to pr- pronounce. Asthenia. It's a verb which corresponds with the noun. All right, so it can also refer to 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 weakness, weakness or sickness. But again, depending on the context, the, the question is what 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 do they refer to in this context right and so there's certain words that we can contrast together um like large and small good and evil light and dark right so in in these two verses that asthenia is contrasted with strength or dunamis which also means power right um it's while the word word as the Theno is contrasted with strong, all right? So it means mighty. So in both of the cases, the translations of weakness and weak are fine, but we can't, we couldn't contrast strength with um, sickness um, in this in this context. So um, that's just a little bit of trying to go through that and, and, and talk about that. So because there's, in, in Galatians, in Galatians, he says that, um, you know, that how through my infirmity of the flesh, I preach the gospel. So it's like um, his infirmity of the flesh. There's so much stuff that points to not being sickness. He preached through co- the consequences of reproaches or persecutions. Um later in it says distresses for Christ's sake so that is what this thorn is it's people who were inspired by this messenger of Satan that are persecuting and reproaching approaching reproaching him so a, a thorn in the flesh is somebody that that um, harasses you it's an, an annoyance Um that that's what the the idiom is in in Hebrew culture. It's likened to what we would use today to say that person's a pain in the neck. Um, it's some sort of you, you know um, person that's always making life hard for you. All right, so that's really what it is. So, but we'll we'll talk about it just a little bit, you know, further. Um, <laughs> since that's short, but, uh, Paul says the reason why he was given, given this was because of the abundance of revelation that he had. So Paul says that his revelations came directly from Jesus. That's in Galatians and, and that he had so, so many that he was able to write a large 
portion of the New Testament, obviously. Um, he was even caught up in the third heaven and heard these unspeakable words, right, which he would not repeat, and he didn't even act like it was him. He said it was a, somebody, somebody else that he knew. Um, so a person in, in this type of position w is, is or would be or have the possibility of being vulnerable to, to flattery and praised by people who could cause him to be um, exalted and even snared by the devil. So um, to counter the temptation of those things, it seems as though God has allowed people to persecute Paul to keep him humble, right? <laughs> so um, that that's interesting. So... You can also see this, though, in, in other types of, not other types, but in other areas of scriptures. Um, in Numbers and Joshua and Judges, Ezekiel, they will all talk about thorns. Um, they'll say, they'll talk about somebody or a group of people and say, you know, the you, you, the, you let remain of them shall be um, pricks in, in your eyes, thorns in your sides. Uh, this this people shall vex you. Um, there's other like th th scourges in your sides, thorns in your eyes, um, and it will speak of the inhabitants of this land. Um, they shall be as thorns in your side. Um, a pricking briar to the house of Israel, stuff like that. So, again, with the uh, the practice of letting Bible interpret the Bible, we have an expression that Paul is using, a thorn in the flesh. So when he's he's describing something to the Corinthians. So if if he was sick, why didn't he just say he was sick, right? So he said that other guys like um, um, uh, tr Trophimus and Ep um, <laughs> Epiphroditus, he said they were sick. Uh, so if a thorn in the flesh refers to sickness, why didn't why why didn't he just say that? Um, hey, these guys had a thorn in the flesh, like Timothy, you know, or not Tim and. It's in Timothy where he talks about Troph Trophimus uh, being sick, but he doesn't say he had a thorn in his flesh. Um, so, got you know, it's not it's not being hidden here. It shouldn't be a secret that it's something else. Uh, so, if people are talking about sickness in this case with Paul, and he was able to heal people. Um, because he had this these gifts of healing and, and God has graciously bestowed uh, gifts of healing to the church. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, I don't think Paul Paul wasn't trying to confuse the the church in Corinth by re referring to his affliction as a thorn thorn in the flesh and say that have them think it was um, a sickness, but he is actually using the idiom, a terminology, that would have been used um, by them, would have been known by them, and understood by them, and it's also in the Old Testament, which this would give explanation to his situation very well, um, that they would understand what he's talking about. And he said that, um, you know, and when he's in Acts, um, in the book of Acts, he, he says that he, you know, he believed that all things which were written in the law and, and in the prophets. So he, he, he would know that these Israelites went to the promised land. They were destroy their enemies completely. And they did most of the time, but when they did not obey and they mixed with these other, um, other, other peoples, people groups, uh, then they would vex them and they would come back, persecute them in their times of weakness. So this situation 
uh, is is going on with with Paul, and this is how he uses this to to explain what what is going on in this uh, letter. So, um, if thorn, if you look up the word thorns or thorn, um, also in the Bible and in the in in Hebrew from the Old Testament that it's um it it the fact that it does refer literally to a thorn <laughs> is is evident by its by its use everywhere but but there the word translated thorns only occurs twice in the old testament in numbers and joshua um in two two other places and um um numbers and ezekiel the word used um to translate the hebrew word is the same word used by Paul when he referred to his thorn in the flesh. So it, that should show us that that's exactly what Paul's referring to. So nowhere in Scripture does a thorn ever refer to sickness, um, disease, or a physical infirmity, but only to people who were a, a nuisance or harassment. Um, so... Why then would Paul ever use it in any other context? You know, he wouldn't. Paul used that this term, terminology to convey to the Corinthians the exact nature of his affliction, right? So um, even just as we, we would, it's the exact same thing, like I said earlier, like, like we would refer to somebody who troubles us today as a pain in the neck. So, <laughs> um, so the Israelites suffered their thorn through disobedience, but Paul's was for his own safeguard against self exaltation. But it doesn't alter uh, the fact that a thorn refers to people who persecuted in both both cases. Um. And we we could and and we can say that this thorn you know was was spiritually, um, because the messenger of Satan is mentioned and was sent to harass him or buffet him. Um, physically, the people who who he um, he used to persecute Paul, right? Um, to interpret. A thorn in the the flesh as, as anything else seems to just be doesn't fit. Um, <laughs> I can hear my sons. So, um, so I I I would think if a a thorn in the flesh means persecution, why doesn't the Bible say that other Christians had a thorn in the flesh and other and other times when persecution is happening, right? Um, but we should also know that we, we have all been promised persecution in some way. And the answer is that Paul's persecution was excessive in nature. And though others were being persecuted, um, even to, to death, Paul's was over an extended long uh, period of time. Um, he, he faced death often and there's there's not there's not evidence that anyone else had such a prolonged or uh, such a, a long period of uh, s a severe persecution through a messenger of Satan being assigned against them as an individual as Paul does. Um, <clears throat> so when you th also when you think of the word buffet or harass. That is again, <coughs> excuse me. I needed a drink of ice cold water. <laughs> okay, I won't edit that out. Um, we that's used in Matthew when when Jesus is being beaten. Um, they they it says they, they spit in his face and and buffeted him in other translations. Um. So, th this isn't, um, 
a sickness, you would it was sent to harass or buffet him. And that word literally means to strike with blows. Um, the the verb um, means a fist, so it it means to strike with the fist or to punch. Um, the, the same, like I said, that that is being used when it's talking about Jesus um, during all the stuff that's happening to him um, when he was on trial before his crucifixion that they were they buffeted him they were striking him with the fist they were punching him and beating him up so you could actually interpret this as a blow or a punch and um and that's that's really what's going on so and it affected his flesh he does say so uh there's there's many times when he talks of you know the sufferings of Christ abound in us um through infirmity of the flesh I preach the gospel my t- temptation which was in the flesh I bear in my body the marks of the of the Lord Jesus the you know um when he says things like that in the body in my body in the flesh um he He's stating that his afflictions were those things that this was exactly where his thorn was. Um, he he will refer to the afflictions of the the gospel, preaching the gospel through infirmity of the flesh. I've said this, but when he he went into Macedonia, he said our flesh had had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. And he's talking about fighting, so it's persecution. It's not literally saying they were just worn out or tired. I'm talking about um, persecution that came um, from from all sides uh, that they were going into. Um, in one particular time, um, he's t- talking about the persecution that came through casting the, the spirit of divination out of a woman at Philippi. And that... Re- um, that results in them being flogged and put in prison. And uh, if you would just take note of how many times he was beaten and flogged, and one time he's carried out of the city, um, and I, 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 I think that he was dead, but then it says the, the others uh, gathered around him and prayed for him, and then he, he raised up up got back up and went back into the city i think he was beaten so bad he probably was dead or on the verge of death and um the other men prayed for him and that gave him either brought him back or gave him the strength to get back up and go right back into the city so um so if if we if we know how many times this man has been beaten and flogged and 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 all that stuff, we we not only see how much his flesh um, had been affected, but then we can understand why he initially wanted to get rid of it, right? So, um, and so the the work of the messenger of the Satan. I mean, that's something too. You can go through Acts. And, and read read some of that stuff it, not not that actual phrase but just um, all the beating and stuff that that's going on um, so that I mean in a nutshell that's pretty much it but the amazing thing is that his attitude there at the end his attitude is um that I am content. I am content with weakness. I'm content with insults and hardships and persecutions and calamities. And, you know, he also parallels Jesus here. And just as when Jesus, before his arrest, he prayed three times for um, 
the cup of suffering to, to pass. Um, Paul Paul seeks God three times to um, to remove his thorn in the flesh here too. So, um, in in Paul, so what Paul is given grace to sustain him, and his attitude towards this is. Um, to be content, which is a marvelous thing. <laughs> so, because after he receives his answer from God, he comes to terms with it, and his attitude towards it was summed up in in um, in another translation. It says uh, that he would glory in in his infirmities and take pleasure in them. So he gloried in it and he took pleasure in it. That's hardly any any of our attitudes thwart, towards anything <laughs> today. Um, but uh, that that's just, I mean, that's Paul, isn't it? <laughs> it's just Paul through and through, it seems like. Uh, so there's a lot to learn there. So um, no, I don't think Paul's thorn in his flesh was a sickness or his eyes i think it was the persecution i think it was the beatings and the floggings and um prison and all that stuff and it was there throughout his his ministry pretty much and he he prayed that it would stop and it didn't and he says that it would be there to keep him humble so he would not get full of himself or puffed up with the revelations that Jesus has given him that he put into to um into letters for us to now have a scripture and he learned to be content and 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 be be satisfied to know that he was doing um what he was supposed to do and that he was going to have to face that because that was that was that was the deal that was um he he was content and his strength came from jesus and he he knew that he was in in christ and that god's grace was sufficient to get him through those those things Thanks for listening, guys. I uh, hope that one was helpful for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, disagreements, I welcome them all. Send me an email at thekingdomprojectpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, be a mustard seed, be leaven. Thanks.